So good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Highgate Select Board meeting for February 3rd, 2022. Our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America, America and to and the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, 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 with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so do we have anyone for public comment that is not already on the agenda? Oh, hold on a second, a couple people coming in. Um, Kelly R and an iPhone just joined. So maybe we ask the question again in a second. Kelly's not in yet. Heidi, yeah, she... this is Rebecca, the iPhone is me. Oh, great. Rebecca Horrigan is with us. So are we all in now? Okay. We are good to go. All right. So anything for public comment? Okay. So Shelly, you're up first. Okay. So um, I think the first thing I'm going to start with, it's not on the agenda. It's the contract that I had emailed you for the tax map maintenance, it's an annual contract. Amy forwarded it to me earlier this week. It's uh, $4,100 for the year. That pricing has not changed. And uh, Amy is pretty well happy with their services. They do a nice job for the town. It's on our website and they work with Amy very closely. So that would need to be signed to be renewed for the 2022-2023 year. Okay, has everyone had a chance to look at that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, can I have a motion to sign? Make the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. I'll leave the original with Wendy. Um, okay. So the next time there's an in-person something and if I don't happen to be there. Sure. And All then right. the only other thing I have for you tonight is the check warrant. Okay. So on our motion to sign, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And the check warrant, has everyone had a chance to look at the check warrant? Yes. Yep. Okay. Can I have a motion to sign the check warrant at a later date? I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. I will leave that with favor as well. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And that's it for me today. Okay. Any other questions for Shelly? Okay. Moving right along. Wendy. Hello. Hello. Um, you have minutes from January 20th. Okay. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes? Yes. Yep. Okay. Can I have a motion to sign the minutes? I'll make that motion. Okay. Can I have a second? Second. I'm so proud of you, Kyle. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Um, I sent over just in the last couple of days our new contract from Avenue for our land record software. Did you all get a chance to look at that? Yes. If you didn't, we can do it next time. But if you did, we can get it out of the way tonight. It's um, a five year contract um, with Avenue enterprise solutions which we've been with them since 2012 they've changed names a few times 
super happy with their service, responsive when we have an issue. Um, the users of the system really enjoy it. Um, the price actually went down. Am I right, Shelly? $20 a month it went down? Yes. Yes, we currently paid $350 and that new contract is for $330 a month. Okay. So it would be a five-year contract starting March 8th of 2022 to March 7th of 2027. And I believe that is paid for out of recording fees that I collect. Is that correct, Shelly? Yes, $5 uh, of every recorded page goes to paying the um, online digital services. And also we get a credit every month. You probably see that on the check warrant. There's a negative invoice. Once we went digital online with our land records, there, uh, we get a monthly credit for anyone that prints online. Okay, so are we ready to make a motion on that contract or do we need more time? I think we're ready. Okay, can I have a motion to sign? So moved. Do I have a second? Uh, second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, thank you. And I just have some town meeting updates. Um, town reports, they are out. Um, the sources, McEwen's, the library, the town office, Martin's General Store, the arena. Um, there's a digital version on the website and I have had quite a few calls to have them mailed. So those are going out regularly. Um, absentee ballots, I did just receive all of my ballots today. I was waiting on the school district. I did just get those today, so I have everything. I'm gonna turn on my camera here for a second. So if I can show you, can you see, this is the yeah. town ballot. It's a front and back. They're white. This is the ambulance services ballot with the two questions on who they wanna select. That yes. is a Hot pink ballot. And this is the school district ballot. They are yellow. So I do have ballots. I am now just waiting on envelopes because we did deplete our um, supply with the big mailing we did back in the fall. So um, I am waiting on some envelopes. I should have those very soon. So I, I have let people know that. So hopefully everybody understands. I will hopefully have everybody's ballots out in the mail next week. How was um, the re Go ahead. How was, how was the response with the postcards? Um, good. Um, good. Most people, uh, uh, did you get your postcard? Did you understand the information? Yes, and they were grateful for the information, found it real informative and, um, so yeah, I, I haven't gotten any kicked back in the mail. So that's a good sign, but who knows? I might get those this summer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but um, so the postcard was well received. And I mean, I got mine about two weeks ago. So I would think every, anyone that's going to get one would have gotten it by now. Um, and the info session is the Tuesday before town meeting, February 22nd at 6 p.m. Um, currently it is scheduled for in-person as well as Zoom and phone. Um, I do have a list of appointed positions that I published. Um, so I'm looking for letters of interest. Here's the list. Um, letters of interest are due by February 25th, so that I can put this list in front of you at the um, meeting after town meeting. Wendy, is that meeting yes, sir. or 6.30? Info session is at six. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I think that is it for me as far as town meeting, unless any of you have questions for me. No, I'm good. All right. I'm good too. So if anybody still wants to vote early, there's still plenty of time. Call me, email me, stop in. 
Um, I probably have close to 100 requests already. So I think we're going to have a really good voter turnout. Wow. Um, yeah. I think uh, certain topics on the uh, warning are going to drive some turnout, and that's a good thing. Yes. Yep. Uh, so that's it for me, unless you guys have any questions. Uh, we didn't have any liquor license renewals? Nope. Okay. Not this round. I've only got one or two more to come in. Tyler Place, and that might be the only one left. So nothing yet. Okay. okay. Do we still have to fix the other one where we signed yeah. in the bot? No, um, I sent it on through and they processed it as presented. I put a little note on there that it was a late night. <laughs> so yeah, that was for, I think it was for Jolly. Yeah, yeah. that one went yes. through. So we're all good. We don't have to redo it. Oh, good. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for Wendy? All set, thanks. Okay, move, moving right along. Heidi. Good evening. Um, I'm going to start out with um, a hearing for a grant application. So it is one of the um, requirements of the Vermont Community Development Program um, VCDP. I'm going to say all the names out because I realized and I got a little tip today that I was using too many acronyms. So stop me if I do that. So this um, planning grant opportunity is the same program that we use to complete the airport study. So it's up to $60,000. And this one is for the Village Core Master Plan Committee. And um, not like other planning projects they've done, this is uh, moving into a final phase. So we're looking at getting some concrete information at this point. So um, you all have the budget in your packet and um, what's included in the budget is um, really drilling down into some of the projects that we've uh, been gathering information on. So, um, for example, the committee um, has been working with the library to figure out wh what is a great, what's a, what's a good model for them. We did a site visit to Fairfield. Um, and so what this uh, would do is give us funding to work with an architect and an engineer to come up with final design for a library um, schematics. It would also cover preliminary site engineering so that we can get to that level of uh, being ready for development. It would determine a water source because the um, water and wastewater study that was completed by the Village Corps um, did not have the same opportunity it did for wastewater in that we're, we were not able to do a spot fix for that property. So when they look at wastewater, they did it in, um, in sections. And when they did water, there was just one water opportunity. So it wasn't feasible to construct just to serve that site. So we went back to the drawing board and the engineer that we're working with has um, several ideas. It could be, um, Richard could probably chime in on that. We, there's a possibility of using the municipal well at the office um, or the arena or, or north of that, but that's the thing that they're going to finalize. So, um, they would finish the uh, structural assessment on the Steinauer. So Preservation Trust funded a study of that building and the things that they did not clarify were um, the roof and the, um, the uh, stone foundation. So it would be, it would be um, $4,500 to have someone look at that 
Um, it would be 15,500 to look up the library final design. Um, and these are all just estimates, but we did talk with um, an engineer and we did look at past projects to come up with these ballpark numbers. Uh, preliminary. Some of the water issue, some I'm of the sorry. Water issue is that they have to figure out how many gallons per minute the wells have. And if there is good water on the opposite side of the, the old tracks, they'd have to negotiate with the railroad to go under it. So that could be a deterrent right there, but that's what they're, they're going to look into. Right. So uh, all of the options, they're going to weigh them and figure out what's the best route forward that is affordable for serving one property. Um, so environmental review, we set aside $6,500 for that as well. Um, and uh, the commercial component. So uh, the vision all along has been looking at a public library as well as a commercial entity on the site that could bring in some tax revenue. So, um, and there still is uh, an unknown of what's the, what's the best way to move forward on that part of the property. So it would be developing a timeline and an RFP, a request for proposals to put out um, to developers to see, you know, what, what would they see on that property. So it would get us up as far as being able to get some proposals and, and see what people wanted to, what developers would be willing to work with us on. And, and the committee would set the criteria for what was allowed on the property. How many members of the committee are on? Rebecca and Richard, is there anyone else? Nope, that's it, Rebecca and Richard. Okay, so my question to the both of you is, is this um, what we're suggesting to go with? Um, Guess I'm questioning it because I'm getting some flack from your leader. What's the problem? What's the what's the flack? What is it we aren't doing? I, I think that he is unclear in which direction you're going. I, I'm surprised to hear that. Uh, we chatted about it. Um, well, so, I think the possibility of the discussion is, is we're not looking at it 100%, it's just a business sector. There's also the library to consider. And in the thoughts, it's better to find out if you can propose a library there and the water system and the waste system would benefit the development right now. I'll be very honest with you. You're going to get no developers to look at that unless you get a wastewater system in there. Bottom line, they aren't going to come in and pay for it. Oh, and I agree. The town, the town has opportunities to get money, especially with this uh, ARPA money, to do that system if everything comes around full circle and, and uh, it's timely. But without that, the center of town is going to be up. Like Sharon said, turn it into a park. Well, so this is the opportunity that the committee had discussed. Um, and we're able to meet the required match of 10% through uh, my hours and volunteer hours. So again, it's a project that the committee would be working on with little, no expense to the town. Uh, other than volunteer hours. So, um, you know, I, I maybe Rebecca would like to chime in on this. I think that it makes sense to go forward with it, especially since there's no cost to the town in a dollar amount. I, I guess I am confused about why it wouldn't 
make sense. I think that this is the next logical step forward in this process. I would agree. I just wanted to make sure that members of the committee were all on the the same page. I think um, your leader may be confused about some issues, and Heidi, maybe you need to to sit him down and and explain. I think you're um, correct, Sharon. You're correct. The members are more for this than what the leader thinks they should be going. There's there's a little bit of an overlap of confusion here. Okay, well, I'm I'm throwing it out there that yep. there's some flack, so we'll, we'll try to deal with it before it gets too out of control. I, I throw some flack back, but I don't want to wound anybody. That's good, that's good. I think Behave that, yourself. So our our last meeting was canceled and I don't know when the next one is scheduled, but maybe if there is some misunderstanding about what's going on, we should reschedule that sooner than later. Yeah, I think maybe that would be a good idea. Yeah, that makes sense. And we have a little bit of time because we have to warn it again. Um, I mentioned to you last time that the um, February um, Submission date was canceled because the April review was canceled at Vermont Community Development Program. So uh, we will be submitting April 12th. So we have time um, to, to warn it again and to have a meeting of the group. Um, but I think if we look back through our minutes, we've talked about this at length and the group voted to pursue this um, because the alternative is to do uh, either nothing or the town would fund um, these things that are in this grant. So um, that's that's the, the, the way I would leave it. Is those are the two options, so. Yeah, just make sure you send me a special note, please Heidi, so that I can, uh, Make sure to attend that meeting. I will, will do. So um, unless Rebecca or uh, Richard has any further comments, I'll just wrap that portion up. Can I ask a question? Please. Um, I'm trying to understand better how we're gonna move forward with the whole Meishi project. So. Is it correct that the committee is doing the legwork to see what's possible to do there? And then that goes to the voters to say, this is what we can and can't do. And this is the proposal that we're proposing. And then we vote on that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. But we aren't even that far yet. I mean, we are not far enough along as a committee that we have even discussed what is or isn't possible there. I think that this study will help us get there, but we haven't discussed anything of that fine of a detail yet. Yeah, at this point, I mean, we don't have in the board, we don't have enough info. This planning grant will help clarify that to present this to the town to go to a vote. But you, you're trying to understand what is possible, what the possibilities are. Correct. That Correct. That's why yeah. we have to look at the uh, water sources, the disposal, waste disposal. And at, at this point, instead of just doing the commercial part, that's why we're involving the library. Because if you do it later, the capacity may not be there. If you build the capacity right from the get go, <laughs> To be able to handle everything, then it's less of a problem in the future. Okay. Thank you. There, there are several moving pieces. That, that is the the planning part of it, and the idea of water. Then the wastewater is sort of separate, and then we also have um, this umbrella application, which is try to clean up. 
some of the hazard that was left on the property where the old foundry was. So there are quite a few me moving pieces to this project. Yeah, Sharon's correct. Uh, and if these pieces can be brought together, there, there's gonna be something to be able to present. So if one of the pieces doesn't connect up, it, it's gonna be a problem and probably dead in the water. Well, we're hoping the stars align and the timing is good for public projects and village wastewater is a state priority. So um, all of the hard work of the committee is likely to bring something valuable to the town. Um, they can get through this final planning stage and get some real numbers, um, some real vision for voters to either embrace or reject. And Heidi brings up a good point. With, with the plans, once the uh, appraisals and the plans come back, the state is pushing or help, help, greatly helping the uh, towns for their waste, putting in wastewater systems. And the timing may be just perfect that the town might, might be able to get into this without spending hardly a dime maybe 25 cents, but that's the most. I'll hold you to that, Richard. Are you going to have piggy bank down, Richard? Um, and I, I I'll did furnish put, the 25 cents, God darn it. <laughs> and I, I did put in your packet as well that um, the town's project is recognized on the um, Clean Water State Revolving Fund. Uh, priority list for construction funding for 2023 through 2026. So if we are able to come up with a final design, um, we're in a position to move into construction funds with 100% subsidy. So it's kind of a golden opportunity that they're offering. And if we can um, get all our ducks in a row, we can take advantage of that opportunity. So it's been a, been a long road. They've been doing a lot of planning, but this is um, the one that's gonna pull it together. So are we all set on that topic? Any other questions? And, and we will be discussing this again. Next time I'll ask you to sign a resolution when we have a, a real application together. Um, so we'll come back in uh, March. Okay. Thank you, Richard and Rebecca. You're welcome. Think positive guys, it's doable, but we all got to pitch in together. Through that. Um, so on the same topic for the village um, master plan, we, uh, as Sharon mentioned, we talked about the Brella program last time. Greta came in and let us know that we did not, we were not in the uh, Brownsfield reuse environmental um, limited liability. Act, which is a program that would protect the town if we um, go through the process as they instruct us to. So they paid for uh, phase one and phase two through the Brownfield program, but we did not sign up for Brella um, for the town garage. We signed up for the Meishi property as a new buyer who had not contributed anything to the site. Uh, we took our time entering that program for the Old Town Garage because we did not know really what they would find um, and, and who might be um, linked to those. So they did complete the testing and what they found in the grounds were primarily some heavy metals in a few spots and BAPs, which were all... Um, 
suspected to be linked to the former use as a foundry prior to the town of Haye Onia. So uh, Bre um, Greta came back to explain that we could enter into the Brella program now and get the cleanup, um, the majority of the cleanup funded through that program. When the cleanup's complete, then the program issues a certificate of compliance stating that the town did everything that was asked of them. And that's recorded in the land records and it protects you from future liability claims. If anything, anybody in the future found something in a well, um, the town has a certificate that says that they, they did the necessary cleanup and they would be uh, protected. So um, I sent that application to Greta to have her check it and I heard back from her today that it was okay. So I forwarded it to you, but I'm sure you haven't had a chance to look at it. So um, keep that for food for thought and you can um, look at approving that at your next meeting. Does that make sense? Yes, and you said Ed had already uh, looked at this, correct? Yes, that's correct. And when I put it in your packet next time, I'll uh, put his comments in there. He was not concerned um, for this at all and um, that, that you would attach the map demonstrating what contaminants were on the property with your certification that you did not contribute. So I'll, I'll, um, I'll put that in front of you at your next meeting. Okay. I've got a question. Um, did I understand correctly when Greta gave her her, um, her speech last, last meeting that if they found contaminants that were not part of um, what they thought they would find, that that would be on us, that that would be our liability? Did I misunderstand that? Um, I think that's why she came to you. She wanted you to understand that there's, that there is never 100% certainty, but um, I'll, I'll give you what Ed commented on it um, in writing so you can ponder that. And I, you know, I won't discuss the legal advice. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. I just, um, I know, I know they said a series, a whole series of, 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 of test holes that go out in, in the diameter. And uh, if they found something that wasn't what they thought we'd find, the town was going to be liable to do for the entire cleanup. And I, much, much smarter people than myself can, uh, uh, just that makes me nervous, that's all. Well, I'll send it to you. And if you'd like to have um, Ed, talk it through with you at your next meeting, you could do that. He could, um, you know, answer those well, questions I, for you. I'd appreciate if you just send it and then if I don't understand it, then absolutely, I'm not afraid to ask, uh, ask for that. Okay. Okay. Um, moving on to the airport infrastructure project. There is um, a, an application that is completed that I sent to you um, for the EDA grant. The final, hopefully the final application for that project. So um, I'm looking for your approval of that so I can submit that tomorrow. Do you have, has everyone had a chance to see it? Yes, I've looked at it in depth. Good. Um, do you have any questions? So the question that I brought up to Heidi earlier when I saw her in the week was, um, the idea of taking a USDA loan out. And 
I was not comfortable taking on any more debt for the town at this time. Um, but understanding that that's a part of the application and could be used um, at a further date by another board at another time. So um, for me personally, I'm frugal. You know, I, I, I'm happy getting as many grants as we can. I'm, I'm happy, happy using some ARPA money, I'm, but I'd really like us to be physically responsible for our taxpayers. Um, I'm speaking for myself. Um, the board can speak for itself, but that was my only concern was the funding for this project if we did not receive the $2.2 million. So um, I am comfortable with the way it's worded and I'm comfortable with the, the way it's presented. So I'm, I'm good to go. So let me just respond to that and then everyone else can, um, can share their thoughts too. So um, the USDA loan, um, I, I did mention to you briefly at the last meeting that I had discussed it with Shelley. And um, because we had applied to USDA very early on, not knowing what we were going to need, we applied very high, 993,000, I think is what we requested. And, um, but we know now that you're not authorized to, um, take any loan of any kind above 500,000. So uh, Shelly and I discussed it and it, it would not be a USDA loan that if the town had to take a loan, it would be a, a local loan. So, um, but the, the premise, the hope is that this grant will fill your whole budget. You won't have to take a loan of any kind. And uh, we won't know that until, until we know what they award us. So um, there is also the opportunity to use your ARPA money if you so choose to fill any gap that remains. And um, we also have the ability to um, reactivate or reapply to um, Vermont Community Development Program, which we applied for um, early on in the um, process. And they said they can't fund a project with the primary beneficiary being the state. Because we didn't have a business saying they were coming in it looked like the state was a primary beneficiary. But they did say, if needed, they would be more likely to be a gap funder of a smaller amount. So I think you have a few options. Um, if we get bad news back from EDA, although I'm keeping my fingers and my toes crossed, we put a lot of effort into that application, got EPR to do a beautiful report. And I think we have a highly competitive application. So I'm hopeful. So does anyone have any other questions? Sharon, I just wanna piggyback on Heidi's comments that um, I'm in full agreement. USDA would be a zero to last option on any kind of loan. Um, and after our bond vote, we were approached by a few local banks. So I think even the loan rate, if and uh, only if we needed one, would be very competitive. Um, so you're in a very good position. And this is just part of the application to get that EDA grant. Yes. OK. If there are no other comments, would be be ready to have a motion to sign, or sorry, do we have a motion to allow Heidi to 
electronically sign this and submit it. I'll make that motion. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 So we're all set? You're all set. Submit it okay. tomorrow. Okay. Everybody think positive thoughts. Um, I'm going to move on to the Meishi Road slide. You have a um, summary from a, a um, discussion that I had with our project manager at the state and our engineer, John Spagdis from DeWolf. And um, we're, we're running into a big challenge um, looking at the easement to the property for access from the river. So before we go through um, that whole process, which will be time consuming and potentially costly, they're asking um, the town to consider these four options on this page and um, your engineer will come to your meeting on the 17th to walk you through these and um, help you come to a conclusion. But basically, they, they don't wanna just go forward like this and put a lot of extra money on the project, a lot of extra cost without knowing that we couldn't maybe get a contractor to work just from the road and um, not affect the um, budget. So, Take some time to mull those over. If you have any questions, give me a jingle and I can chat with you about what I know about it. And then the engineer will come to your next meeting and we'll have a Macy Road slide update. Okay. Perfect. Um, I have comments on several other projects we're working on, the uh, safety equipment grant and AOT grants. Um, they were all in the summary. Do you want me to go through those or do you have any questions on any of those? Uh, just go through them, uh, the highlights of them for the public, Heidi, please. Uh, PASIF is the um, insurance company safety equipment grant. We apply for that every year. This year we have a much better deal, $10,000 up from $5,000 with no match required. And it used to be a 50-50 match. Um, so we have two uh, options so far and they're both at the arena. One is for playground surfacing for approximately $1,700 and the other is heat sensors to uh, be tied in with the uh, fire alarm. And that was uh, close to $900. So we still have plenty of things we can uh, put in for. So I forwarded it to the fire department. Do they need new personal protective clothing? And I shared it with the public works department, but if there's something else that you can think of, um, and unfortunately, can't do radio. Sorry. Have Go ahead, thought. Richard. Due to the fact that the pipe busted in the school, and they're going to have to, in that process of repairing, they're also going to have to set up a system where there are electronics out today, and they're mobile also that could detect water leaks and send a message to a head supervisor. They, they do it already at MBU. That should be looked into in the arena. Because there's some apps out there that'll send a, a message within 10 seconds of sensing water to somebody that's responsible to go over there and shut it off or figure it out. Just thought I'd throw that in. Yeah, um, that's an interesting idea. And I can check with the insurance company. It has to be something that will 
uh, lower the likelihood of a claim. So that could possibly be, that might be. What about our uh, sewer line? I'm sorry? What about our sewer line? There's no um, risk, no public risk, or they, they won't cover that. It's basically if someone's going to put a claim against our insurance. Yeah, they come, in, to... they come in and slip in human feces. There's a claim wow. there. <laughs> well, uh, if there's a, it's like it could be a, a loss that the town claims as well. Like if it was damaging um, things. The, the carpet. carpet. But, uh, in the carpet. I can try. I think we should throw it in and see if it sticks. Why not? Worth a try. What'd you say, Kyle? See if it stinks? 10 <laughs> 4. Too soon, yeah. Richard. It's too soon. We can't joke, oh, yeah, can't okay. joke about it. <laughs> um, no, so he has a point. If that line freezes up and the water keeps going, it'll back right up and flood the interior. It, it, it does. It did. It did. <laughs> It did. Okay. <laughs> That's why it's too soon. <laughs> okay. It still smells pretty bad in there. Um, so moving on to road grants, I, I put a couple estimates in your packet. We were ahead of the game this year and we had Tyler Billingsley, East Engineering, look at um, updating some estimates that we had on applications that hadn't um, been utilized. One was for the Macy Road paving from um, not last year. I think it was maybe the year before we applied for that and did not get it. So he updated those estimates for us um, for the class two grant. And then he also updated an old um, estimate for repairing the Ballard Road stone culvert, which has been on the verge of collapsing for a very long time, but it was a very low priority because of the low amount of traffic on the road. So he updated that um, and the Public Works Department did not have a more pressing uh, project. So they thought it was a good time to apply for that one, get it out of the way. Um, and those grants, the Public Works Department is um, typically able to cover the local match with their equipment and ours. So um, those grants just opened up so we can get an application together, uh, perhaps for your next meeting. Okay. Um, and the uh, public works radios. You've um, asked me to find out about a way to improve the communication um, dead spots that they have. And so I reached out to uh, Burlington Communications who uh, built, constructed the tower on the end of the fire department and um, there is a quote in your packet for a repeater that they believe will resolve the issue. So a little over $12,000 and um, can't, I don't know where the money will come from. Uh, the safety grant will not fund radios. And apparently I can't use ARPA for radios either, so. I was discussing with Heidi that uh, we wait until May-ish, May, May -ish, see where their budget is and if they have a surplus to then go ahead and do this project. Who's, who's they, Shelly? The highway department. Okay. Once, okay. if they've got money left in their budget, you know, there's no major accidents, there's no major fixes on the trucks. If they've got some money left over in their budget towards May, June, the end of the year to move forward and get this done. Now, now what's the problem? Because I thought they just put that system up just last year. It, it, it doesn't reach. The communications tower is for the fire department. Oh. And I believe the police department 
but it does not communicate with the public works department. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the trucks are having to communicate through their radios from truck to truck because they can't reach the base. Um, it's so dangerous. To, so they have you to can, relay. Yeah, you you have people that are yeah out of communication that if you were to have an emergency, you'd be in a pickle. Well, I didn't realize that. I thought that they were on that tower, but I, now I know. I didn't realize that yeah. before. Hey, hey, Heidi, will the the suggestion by Burlington Communication will that completely eliminate the dead all the dead spots? Um, I can't say with any certainty. I think that they thought that this was a logical assumption, and if there is interest, they would come and uh, meet with the public works department and talk through what exactly what the issues are. Okay. So that's it for me. Other than when you're finished, I have um, a personnel issue and a legal issue for executive session. And if you're all done with me, I'm going home, or I am home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Richard. I'll, I should say I'll sign off. <laughs> <laughs> Drive safe. Yeah, good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Okay, so is there anything for the select board? I've got a couple things. Yep. Well, one of them we've already discussed is that sewer line um, at the town, at the municipal building. Yeah. I don't know what we have to do to, this has been an ongoing problem. I know, uh, and we, we, we tried this summer when we tore it up, but. Obviously, there's got to be a sag in that line because that line should pretty much drain out every time it flushes, and it's not. The other well, thing, yep. Yeah. Uh, part of it too is that uh, Nick felt that maybe we are pumping that tank too often, that we're not getting enough, basically heat generated from the. Um, there's not the enough solids fat. in there's order to uh, right. uh, to function the way it's actually supposed to. So this is so PC. There's not enough crap in the tank to keep it from uh, to keep it warm. So exactly. they have to start adding. I guess they used to put some um, bacteria tablets or something in that they used to get from Drumac. Um, they need to put something in there, and I do agree they probably shouldn't pump it as much because it just doesn't get used enough. Right. Um, the other, yeah, they were talking about that as well. Uh, the tank is completely insulated now, and they would like to see, and I don't blame them at all, a riser of some sort off that tank. So they have to, every time it needs to get dug up, they don't, they just open a cap and not have to tear the tear the ground up again to get to the tank. So I don't know what we need to do to start looking into that. I know it's nothing that's going to happen tomorrow, but um, just throwing that out there. Um, the second thing I had was the old Araldi, uh property over in East Highgate. Uh, Quinn and Laura Lang own it now. Uh, it's the pond. The pond is just about solid with weed. Um, why is that an issue? That is a very important uh, dry hydrant spot. It's an important uh, fire safety spot as far as that pond uh has been used more than once, obviously, for fire protection. There's a dry hydrant installed in it. And I don't believe the hydrant could even be used right now because it's so plugged up with weed. Um, I'm not asking for the town to go clean it out, but I'm asking if there's anything the town can do to look into what we can or can't do because it's a water. I don't know if it's a, we have to go through the engineers or something on this. Uh, I don't know if there's anything that the town has resources that could help them so we could get this pond so it could at least be accessible again for fire protection. Could look at the dry hydrant fund. I'm surprised it's that bad. It's a relatively new dry hydrant. I mean, the, yeah, the three, four years ago. 
the hydrant's only maybe four years old, if that. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that pond was invaded with water chestnut, or if it's milfoil. Milfoil. I'm sorry, but something has gotten into that pond where it is. You can actually see it's dropped the level of the pond. I don't know if it's even the springs even allowed to fill it, feed it anymore because it's so full of weeds. Hmm. Uh, last summer, I noticed you could look like you'd almost walk across the thing. Um, and like I say, it's an invasive species weed, obviously. Um, and I don't know what hoops you have to jump through to be able to dig that out or if it's a privately owned pond and it can just be done. Oh, no, you can't do that. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah, it'll probably have to go to the civil engineers and A and R. Is it uh, the Army Corps of Engineers that? that... I'm thinking, yeah. So this this could get very expensive. Well, I don't know if it is so much expensive, but it's just hoops to jump through. Okay. I think it's so once could... it's explained, I think it won't be as bad as it could be. So I guess what I'm asking is if there are any resources that I'll be more than happy to take point on it, just point me in the right direction to talk to the right people. That would be appreciated. Do you have a I contact? Can... Go ahead, Heidi. I was just going to say, I, I can see if the dry hydrant fund would contribute anything towards maintaining the hydrant. Um, I know they don't like them to be useless after they pay for them. That, that was funded through their program. So um, I could yeah. check there. Beyond that, I'm not. not That's the Aiken, the Aiken Dry Hydrant Grants, what that was, what it is. Um, so, okay, that's all I had. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, what is the process to get dry hydrants? Uh, Mobilize to different areas of town. Mobilized? Well, I mean, I, in, my, under, my, understanding is, my understanding is the fire department uh, contacts the, the Aiken uh, fund. I can't think of the guy's first name. It was after a firefighter. Um, they have, uh, uh, they'll come out, do a, do a site visit, and they'll look and see what the need is, obviously. And then there's, it's quite easy to, to get the grant. My understanding is it's quite easy to get the grant. Um, there is a lot of, a lot of hoops to jump through. Um, and Franklin, I, when I was chief, I didn't, I got sick of jumping through the hoops. So we just put our own hydra in. We did our own thing on the, on the Brown's corner pond when the row was being built. And uh, you know, it's a matter of getting, you need to have guardrail put around it. You need to have that kind of thing done. But it's 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 just paperwork, Henry, like anything else. So does it have to be accessible from the main road? I don't believe it has to be accessible from the main road at all. No, it has to be obviously accessible to a fire truck, but it doesn't have to be up a main road. Okay. The last one that um, the fire department was working on that we didn't do yet, we we focused on the Araldi one last time was um, at the Schwenier Farm, uh, formerly the Noel Farm. There's a pond there. And uh, we were starting a design for that. Okay. Yeah, so that spot. Be, it can be put on personal or yes. private property. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. And it's actually quite helpful for the landowner because uh, to, a, to an insurance company, that dry hydrant is considered the same as a, a charge hydrant. And yep. if you're within 500 feet or a thousand feet, it actually reduces your insurance by having that. Yeah, thousand feet. That's kind of the reason I'm asking because I'm right now I'm looking for insurance again or trying to get things requoted. And I know that was one of the things that was asked. So, and it's been asked before years ago about possibly putting hydrants up this area. I don't think the brook between my place in the Highgate Franklin line would be sufficient, I think, as a water source, but that would be the best place for one if it was. For years, that's been the only spot. That brook has been the only spot on that side of town. There's been in many a fire. I've we've had to throw suction in that that very brook. So right. So 
who who drives the bus to get something like that to happen? I would think that Gary Greeno, your your uh, fire chief, would be the one to uh, to to just talk to him first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Or or I can talk to him for you. Either one, Henry. Well, if if you're there, just have that discussion sometime. Okay. And I I got a pawn that I would also possibly entertain. Definitely, we'll uh, touch base with them. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so like Ford, you also have a an agenda in your packet to approve for your information session coming up. Yeah, I'd like to expand upon that. Okay. I I would like to be able to go through our expenses. Um, so that anyone watching can ask questions as we go along so that there's no nothing that isn't completely transparent to the public in that information meeting so and the agenda is the same as last year Sharon and as you read the article then we went into that budget like the highway budget or the right exactly budget. And yeah. read through that after reading the article on the warning. So yeah. totally doable. Yeah. Just so that if there's any questions, not that we have a large audience, but the information's out there if anyone wants it. Anything else for select board? So uh, just before you move off that, so is everyone okay with this agenda? We'll post it tomorrow. Yes, that's fine. Vern? Yeah, I'm good to go. Kyle? No problem with me. Chris? Oh no, I've already lost him. Huh? Is he there? He's still on. He's still showing up as being on. Um, maybe he just had to take a break. Body break. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. think we're good. All right. And Kyle, good catch on the, the dry hydrant. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to check them all. Absolutely. Okay, if there's nothing else for select board, anything else from the public? Okay, I would entertain a motion to exit the regularly selected, uh, regularly scheduled select board meeting and enter into executive with Heidi Birch Valenta. I'll make so that motion. Okay, which one wants to do the second? I'll take the second. Chris can have um, the. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Everybody stay safe out there.